This is Medio Mundo. Hi, everyone. Rusty back here with your latest Medio Mundo forecast for this Thursday, December the 14th. Hoping you've been having a good day so far. In this video, there's obviously one big headline, and that is going to be that area of low pressure developing in the Gulf of Mexico with the widespread and significant impacts I expect for the Bahamas. They're seeing some very windy conditions already today, but the weather really goes downhill tomorrow and into the weekend. I've got all the newest information on that. We've got a lot of new subscribers from the Bahamas. I want to thank you for finding us here at Media Mundo and my friends across the rest of the Caribbean. You know I've got you covered. I've got the entire Caribbean forecast coming up in this video as well. As the kids say, smash the like button and let's get started. So still relatively tranquil conditions here on this Thursday afternoon across the Caribbean. We're starting to see the first signs of life in the Gulf of Mexico with that area of low pressure trying to develop here. So let's zoom in a little bit more on that. I'm going to put the fronts on this as well, and we're going to get an idea of how this is going to evolve in the next 24 to 48 hours. I'm going to switch over to the uh, satellite imagery, the visible satellite imagery. Beautiful shot here because you can see see that we have our clouds moving in completely different directions. Our low level clouds are actually moving from east to west. Our upper level clouds are moving from west to east. And we're just starting to see the first signs of getting at least some broad rotation here. This is going to be for December, a significant area of low pressure developing. It's going to rival the pressure of a weak tropical storm here, and it's going to bring tropical storm-like impacts to portions of Florida and the Bahamas starting tomorrow, but especially on Saturday through early on Sunday. So this is a significant system here. That is what it looks like from the visible satellite imagery. If I swing back over to the infrared and then look at just the cirrus tops, these are our higher cloud tops. You notice that everything is moving from west to east. So again, uh, along these boundaries, and we had a weak cold front come through uh, Florida and the northwest Bahamas, which is stalled out. It's now lifting back north suitably as a warm front. But there's another focusing mechanism here for this moisture to begin to develop. Looking at the water vapor imagery all the way to the highest levels, this is the upper level water vapor imagery, there is rich, deep moisture. Again, especially for December, everything is still elongated right now, but we're going to start to see that spin getting cranked up again, especially tomorrow and then late Friday and into Saturday as it drives east, northeast across the Gulf of Mexico. At the lower levels of the atmosphere, it's just moisture laden air. So this is going to come with some significant rain and a lot of wind. That is really the the big story out of this, uh, again, for our friends in the central and the northwest Bahamas. Speaking of the Bahamas, let's get into it here. The first thing I actually want to do uh, is just show you that today, on this Thursday, it's been cloudy, it's been breezy, and that's the kind of weather that you're going to see in the Bahamas through tomorrow as well. The winds are going to be really freshening up as well, and then we'll really see the rain drive in with that storm system as we move through Saturday. These are our wind vectors. The first thing I actually want to do is switch over to this product and we're just going to look at the arrows here with this wind vector imagery so i'm going to make a couple of changes here on my model and then I'm going to loop this into motion. And we're going to look together at what the wind profile is going to do. It's going to be very easy to see this area of low pressure developing here tomorrow in the Gulf of Mexico. Again, the central pressure from the European and the GFS models, somewhere around 995 to 997 millibars. That's a significant low. Again, it would be rivaling a weak tropical storm if this were hurricane season. It's not going to be tropical. We're not going to have an eye. We're not going to have a track. But again, impacts of a... Oh, minimal tropical storm are going to be impact, uh, going to be seen through Florida and especially the central and the northwest Bahamas as well. So let's stair step this a little bit here. Again, today our winds in the Bahamas are out of the northeast. They're going to turn out of the east and eventually the southeast throughout the day tomorrow and into Saturday. Here comes that low moving across the western uh, Florida coastline into uh, as we get Saturday night into early on Sunday, and then the winds turn out of the west behind that. Now we can go back and look at actually some of the wind speeds here. They're going to be a little bit hard to see, but I promise you I'm going to zoom in and uh, let me make sure that I've got the text on there. So they're going to pop on, and then I'm going to pop those on, and hopefully it all works together. There we go. All right. So even if it's a little bit hard to see, the pinks are going to be winds that are gusting in knots in the mid to upper 20s. The whites are going to be your wind gusts in knots of over 30 knots. So 30 to 35 knot winds will be approaching the northwest Bahamas as the winds turn out of the southeast. And this is going to be into our Saturday 
Saturday night, and then early on Sunday. But again, even now, we have fresh winds, 15 to 25 knots. They're going to get stronger tomorrow, 20 to 25 knots. Then as we get into Saturday, they're going to be 25 to 35 knots. Obviously, this is going to churn up all of the waters, coastal and offshore. Small craft are absolutely urged to remain in port. Uh, you know, I'm a boater. I've been offshore of the Florida coastal waters 20, 30, 40 miles more times in my life than I can count. I wouldn't want to even mess with the kind of winds and the sea conditions that we're going to see here as this storm system comes through. And even behind the storms and the wind is going to just stay with us at least through Monday afternoon here across the central and the northwest Bahamas. But significant northeast to eventually southeast winds that swing back out of the west. And again, in some areas, especially the Northwest Bahamas, extreme Northwest Bahamas, places like Abaco, Grand Bahama, Walker's Key, the Bimini area, even down towards New Providence and the Lutheran Andros, 25 to 35 knot winds on our Saturday. Let's talk about the rain because the wind is a big story, right? It's a big part of the story that's going to be very prolonged. Went breezy today all the way through Monday. The, the rain maximum is going to be another big story as well, because this is going to be coming with a lot of rain. So let me switch on over to our reflectivity. I will drop the wind layer off of this as well, and then loop this back up. Let's start with the broad perspective, and we'll kind of stair-step this, how this low is going to evolve. So again, today, it's just a big blob of rain, basically in the central Gulf of Mexico. That's really not impacting anyone. It's north of Cancun and Cozumel. As we go through our Friday, we start to see the first signs of that wrapping up just a little bit. There's gonna be drier air on the southwest side, so we're never gonna really have a strong closed low at the lowest levels of the atmosphere, but it'll be significant enough. And then this is a big wind and rainmaker through Florida, especially on Saturday. As we get into Saturday afternoon and evening, you see the rain begin to move into the Northwest Bahamas, and the weather really goes downhill Saturday late into Sunday. The rain should clear our Northwest Bahamas, Central Bahamas throughout the day Sunday, maybe even as early as mid-morning on Sunday for Freeport and Lucaya and Nassau. And then it's going to take a little bit longer for the Central and the Southeast Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos. Generally speaking, the highest impacts will be for the Central or the Northwest Bahamas. Southeast Bahamas will be a little bit quieter, still very windy conditions, but not as much rain. And the same thing for the Turks and the Caicos. Let's zoom in even a little bit closer here. I think it's a good idea. Put this back into motion. And again, we'll take a look at this. Today, Breezy with some spotty rain along that frontal boundary uh, that's just kind of stalled out. We'll have the kind of the same scenario with stronger winds tomorrow. And then it is really Saturday that the weather just plummets here across the area with a good swath of extremely heavy wind driven rain. Water spouts are a possibility. Obviously, tidal surges go along with this. There is a gale warning that will go into effect today for the Northwest Bahamas for the duration of this event and a gale watch in effect for the central and the other portions of the Northwest Bahamas. The extreme Northwest Bahamas, you guys do have a gale warning that will be in effect here uh, for this. And more than likely that gale warning could be extended farther off towards the south. And again, you can see that rain beginning to exit the area early on Sunday. So rough, rough conditions throughout the Bahamas, wind and rain, rough surf and sea conditions, you know, out of this world kind of, if you will. And then, uh, you know, rainfall amounts that could be fairly generous. So let's take a look at that next. We'll switch over to uh, the total precipitation here. Let me go back over to here. There we go. And then I'm going to extend this out to, uh, this is going to be, that's Sunday morning. Let's go out a little bit further in time. Let's go into Sunday afternoon. Give me just one second here. There we go. All right, Sunday afternoon. So this is the cumulative rainfall total between now and Sunday afternoon. Uh, if there's a little bit of decent news, it's that the model is now a little bit lower in the rain, especially along the Fort Lauderdale to Miami coastline. They had six, eight inches of rain in the model yesterday, a little bit more progressive with the rain on Saturday, not sitting in one spot as long. So it's lowered the rain numbers in that area. However, for the Northwest Bahamas, for Andros, for New Providence, near Nassau, maybe four inches of rain. Marsh Harbor, three there as you get up towards uh, Abaco. High Rock, two. Freeport, Lucaya, two. Same thing for West End. So rain totals, I think, are going to average between about two and four inches here in the Northwest Bahamas. There will be some locally higher amounts, maybe up to six inches. It's significant enough to cause some problems. You notice as you get down towards Georgetown and Clarencetown, we begin to see those numbers fall off relatively quickly. Still could see over two inches to three inches of rain in Georgetown. But then as you get down towards the Turks and the Caicos, 
relatively limited chance for any higher end rain. There's going to be some very fast moving, breezy showers to go along with the forecast in the Turks and Caicos over the weekend, but just not the significant slug of moisture that I expect in the central and the northwest Bahamas. So that's kind of the overall look for us here. Uh, made a graphic so we can kind of just break this down in simple terms, the impacts that I expect. So there's a gale warning in effect for the extreme Northwest Bahamas that could include all of the Northwest Bahamas and the Central Bahamas throughout the duration of this storm event. Winds are gonna start out of the Northeast, but they're gonna swing out of the Southeast at 25 to 35 knots. Seas are gonna be building, apologize for the spelling on building, of eight to 15 feet with very long and uh, high period Northeast swells. All right, again, wouldn't want to be messing with it. If you were in a small boat, you are obviously urged to stay in port. Rainfall potential, widespread two to four inches, locally four to six. Again, that rain should be ending throughout the day on Sunday and for the Northwest Bahamas, maybe as early as Sunday morning. All right, so that is the look in the Bahamas. Now, again, if you have a specific question about the forecast, the easiest way for me to respond is drop it in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer the question. If you'd like to let me know what's going on in your area, drop that in the comment section. I always love to hear from my friends across the Caribbean and in the Bahamas. Let's get back out to the wide view here and we'll look at the forecast of the rest of the Caribbean. I can unequivocally say it is gonna be quieter, which is great news. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have some areas of heavier rain and the opportunity for some showers. One of the areas that I'm gonna be watching for some rain that kind of is tied into this area of low pressure is gonna be the northwest side of the Caribbean, specifically Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. There is the opportunity here that as this system moves through, we're gonna pull in a southwest wind, which is gonna drag some moisture over the area. I, I mentioned this in yesterday's video. I think we could spell some showers in this area. Now, it's not gonna be as significant in these areas, but there will be some moisture to come along for the ride. And then for my friends in the Lesser Antilles through the ABC Islands and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and Hispaniola, got a few showers in the forecast over the next five days, although relatively speaking, it's gonna be a little bit more tranquil for you. All right, so let's get back over to the wide shot of the rain. And I'm gonna first start off in the Northwest side of the Caribbean. So we'll put this back into motion here. Let me just make sure that I've got the uh, reflectivity back on as I'm switching this again. Thank you so much for liking the video and thank you again for subscribing. If you are not a subscriber, again, we got you covered across the Caribbean and the Bahamas. All right, so you're gonna see that big slug of moisture coming in, going along for the ride with our front. There's gonna be kind of an elongated axis that goes back into the Cayman Islands. Pretty good chance for showers there. Same thing for Jamaica. It's gonna be, again, not widespread and it's not gonna linger forever here, but we're gonna have a little bit better chance. For today and tomorrow in these areas, spottier rain if nothing else. You can see the model though for tomorrow afternoon. It does have some decent rain for my friends in Jamaica, Port Antonio, Kingston, Maypin, Mandeville, Montego Bay, Negril. This is tomorrow afternoon. So if you've been wanting some rain uh, in Jamaica, you've got a little bit better opportunity for tomorrow. You can see that flare up. Let me get back to tomorrow afternoon. There you go. Then as we get into Saturday again, uh, excuse me, for uh, Saturday, yep, uh, again, spotty rain, but it's there. The chance is there, better than what we've had recently. And then even on Sunday, again, the opportunity for more rain to redevelop in the afternoon hours, even through Monday. It's nothing that near what the Bahamas are going to see, but this kind of at least is a side part of the story here that it's going to drag some moisture to the Northwest Bahamas and give Jamaica and the Cayman Islands the opportunity for some showers. Uh, we'll see some rain in portions of the Yucatan as well, but obviously the moisture is being pulled away from the area. So from Cancun to Cozumel, back towards Belize City and Roatan, San Pedro Sula, spotty rain is possible in those areas, but not a lot of rain for the weekend ahead. We're looking relatively dry for my friends in the ABC Islands. Not a lot of moisture coming off the mainland. The Caribbean right now is relatively dry so a spotty shower is possible there but for the abc islands many dry hours and locations over the next five days let's go into the southern side of the lesser antilles my friends in grenada and trinidad and tobago again trinidad is one of those areas that could see a little bit more rain than the other islands just the proximity to the mainland there still isolated in nature relatively speaking models are showing a little bit better chance for rain late in the weekend and early in the week so you might be relatively dry through saturday a little bit better chance for rain on sunday and monday barbados st vincent st lucia it's about the same scenario again spotty isolated rain 
I've had some people, you know, comment through the Lesser Antilles, hey, we've actually had some decent rain over the last five days. It's going to be very isolated in nature. That absolutely could happen. I mean, look what the model here, just as an example, look what the model does in Barbados. You're going to just see some spotty, heavy rain kind of develop over the island from time to time. So Barbados could be one of those spots, same thing, St. Lucia and Martinique, that catches a heavier shower where you get an inch or two of rain in a hurry. But that kind of rainfall total is just not going to be widespread here through the island chain over the next five days. And we could catch a few showers from our friends in Anguilla and St. Martin and Barbado, uh, Barbuda, excuse me, Antigua, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis as well. And then for the Virgin Islands, if you're traveling there, it's not a horrible forecast. There's a little bit more rain for the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico overall. But again, it's still going to be very spotty in nature. You'll be able to get outside and enjoy things. Just a little bit overall higher rain chance, especially on the eastern side of the island, as winds are going to be driving in from the north into the east. And what that does, of course, in Hispaniola is it makes the uh, Dominican Republic side of Hispaniola have the opportunity for some showers, but it does keep uh, the Haiti side relatively dry. Again, you got that rain shadow effect with the very high terrain there uh, in the mountainous areas. Okay, back over to the wide view, and then we'll take a look at the total precip in all of the Caribbean over the next five days. So again, I'm going to swing it over. Does that work? Nope. Let's see here. I got to move it one more time, and I will do that right now. That's going to be actually through Monday. That's fine. Whatever. Through Monday, uh, 7 p.m. So we'll take a look at that. Actually, that's Tuesday, isn't it? 15th. Nope, that's Monday. I'll get my days eventually here. Uh, this is through Monday. And again, obviously, the significant rain is through the Bahamas. Now, by the way, that Gulf of Mexico rain is going to be over 10 inches, but it's going to be falling in the middle of nowhere. So we don't have to concern ourselves with that. You can just see again through the island chain, there'll be some spotty portions of heavier rain. Uh, you see the east side, Martinique and Dominica, maybe over two inches of rain. Same thing for Trinidad and Tobago, one to two inches possible. Most areas though, through the Lesser Antilles, will be around an inch of rain or slightly less. And again, out of the next five days, you might catch a shower only a day or two. Eastern side of Puerto Rico, maybe over two inches of rain in a couple of spots. And then off of the uh, coastal islands there, Esperanza and Culebra. Road town there in the British Virgin Islands, less than an inch of rain. Same thing for St. Thomas and St. John. St. Croix, potentially an inch or so. But again, if I'm heading there on a vacation, I'm not too worried about it. Still could see some heavier rainfall totals in the northeast side of the Hispaniola. And then for Jamaica, again, it's going to be uh, a little bit better chance for some heavier rain. There's no doubt about it. Notice the model is painting on upwards of two inches of rain on the northern coastline. Again, I would kind of average this out where I would say Jamaica has the opportunity for one to two inches of rain over the next five days. I think we've done a good job of kind of keeping an eye on everything for you here. You can keep an eye on the forecast across all of our social media platforms. Again, Media Mundo is everywhere. We are on TikTok. We're on Instagram, Facebook. Now, if you want to send us a picture or a video, maybe you live in the Bahamas we would love to see that and show this on the YouTube channel. Send that to us at mymediamundo at gmail.com. You could also send it to our Instagram as well, but that's why we have the email address for your pictures and your videos. If you have a question about the forecast, the easiest way to get a response is drop it in the comment section below of this video. And in addition to our forecasting of the Caribbean and the Bahamas, we have a new we uh, video series called Worst Weather in the World, where I highlight the top five most recent extreme weather events across the world. Look for a new one of those coming out very shortly. Friends, you know I'll keep you updated right here at Media Mundo across our area, and especially what's going to be happening in the Bahamas over the next two to three days. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I will see you soon right here at Media Mundo. <laughs>